You're watching Timeless Television Treasures with Chris Fluke. Now, here's your host, Chris Fluke. Hi, I'm Chris Fluke. Welcome, everyone, and thank you for tuning in to Timeless Television Treasures. The mid-1960s was a golden age for science fiction television programs, which brought the wonders of outer space, the final frontier, into our own living rooms. Some of these programs went on to become household names that are still running to this very day. Others, however, failed to pull in the ratings and were lost to the annals of time. Today, we'll take a look at one of those programs, the short-lived space opera, Constellation Quest. In 1967, the small PBS affiliate station, WBOK from Botkins, Ohio, produced the pilot episode with a budget of only $3,000. The finished product was hated so much by the general manager that WBOK never aired the program. Tonight, we're thrilled to show you this never before seen episode. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the first and only installment of Constellation Quest. In the distant future, the year of our Lord, 2007, mankind has traveled far beyond the pale blue planet from whence we came, exploring the stars above. This is the story of the Mamas, a space vessel where planet Earth's bravest and brightest minds traverse the galaxy, discovering new life and bringing peace and order to the new frontier. This is their Constellation Quest. Attention! The captain is on his way. To your stations. Morning, crew. We have a long day of sailing ahead of us before we deliver that plutonium to the Barlonia system. Howdy, Miles. Corporal. Hello, Captain. Doctor. Buongiorno, Cavalletta. Pilot. Hello, Captain. Lieutenant. Good morning, Captain. Good Lord, you startled me. Who let the android on the bridge? Well, she is your personal secretary and second in command of this vessel, so I gave her full. Oh, baloney! Christoph, how far are we out from the port? Oh, it's not like oh no no the spaghetti no it's not going no it's not no no. Captain, pardon the interruption, but we're receiving an urgent message from Ahab. Direct orders from the Constellation League. Thank you, Quiznar. On screen. Hey, Hab, what do you have for us today? Captain Miles Montague, you and your crew are being rerouted for a new mission. Oh, it's a circle of blue! It's a little bit of a metal! I don't know! Yeah! Pilot, again, do not worry. 
where your new destination is only 10 clocks away in the Crumpulon system. Federal intelligence has picked up a primitive distress signal from the planet Sloppy. We believe that it is a previously undiscovered race of intelligent life residing on this planet. We are counting on you to find out. Thank you, Ahab. But be on the lookout. This planet is on the fringes of the Flamborian Empire, and we do not want another encounter with the Flamborians. Well, don't worry, they're not our despot. <laughs> <coughs> Captain, something about this new mission seems very suspicious to me. I urge you to reconsider. You all heard Ahab. The higher-ups think it's a good idea, and I'm not one to disagree with them. Sir, you go against the League's orders quite often. K-8, I swear, if you do not leave this bridge immediately, I will have you dismantled and scattered across the cosmos. Now, let's assemble a landing crew. Lieutenant Quiznar, you're our communications expert. We'll need you to translate if need be. Dr. Packard, you will accompany us in case anyone down there needs medical attention. And if you and I find ourselves in a room alone, well, I guess we'll just see what happens. I will be there for medical assistance. That is all. Right. Corporal Shaker, we'll need your weapons expertise down there in case we see any hostiles. Well, <laughs> butter my butt and call me a biscuit. Let me just run down to my quarters, pitch my adventuring boots. And you? I haven't seen you here before. What's your name? No, nope. sir. Don't worry about it. What do you do? I'm a technician. I used to work downstairs, but I've been on the bridge for about three months now. Perfect. We could use somebody that knows their way around technology out in the field. Meet us in the bot deployment room. That goes for everybody. Sir, I'm not trained for the field. Nonsense! Don't make me ask you twice. <sighs> he'll, uh, he'll be here any minute. There you are. I told you to call me Willie, Miles. And I told you to call me Captain, Corporal. <laughs> oh, Miles, always the jokester. <laughs> right, yeah. Are you sure you don't need to accompany you, Captain? I can be quite useful in the field. I would rather drink all the water from every latrine on this ship than have you accompany us on this mission. You are an unfeeling metal husk, and I do not trust you with any responsibility. I have been programmed to experience over 6,000 different human emotions. And you have just hurt all of them. Jesus. Come on, Kate. You're letting all the good air out. shows that the source of the distress signal is about 30 microclocks north of east of our location. I'll prepare med packs to treat any of the wounds at the site. Everybody follow Chris Nars Lee. Ooh. Well, hey there, little critter. <laughs> Ain't you just the whole cherry tree? <laughs> oh, come on, candor at him. Ooh. I think he likes me. <laughs> Stand back. Um, my name is... There's Ed no time for pleasantries. That thing might be carrying a disease. Oh, Dr. Packard, always trying to kill a tender moment. It's getting away! Well, I reckon it might be worth following that little barbit. Everybody follow that creature! Come on! Y'all are as slow as molasses in the wintertime. 
This is strange. This says that the source of the signal was coming from right here. What are you talking about? We're still in the middle of nowhere. Uh, Captain, you might want to take a gander at this. Look at that. It's a town for tiny people. It's a problem, Moses and Christopher. No, we've discovered a miniature town for tiny people, and we're far too large to investigate. Send down a size mutation ray to our coordinates. Oh, it's a good no, it's a no, it's a no, and no, go on, no. My mother always used to tell me to not forget the little people. Ha, ha, ha. We're getting close to the source of the signal. Everyone prepare for extraterrestrial encounter. Uh, Captain? I don't think it was trying to be your friend. What are you talking about? Captain, is that you? Oh my gosh, is everyone okay? K-8, what did I say about talking to me? Miles, she is your second in command. She is completely authorized to speak to you. Well, as first in command, I declare Quisnar my second in command. It is my honor, sir. What? That is not how it works. Christoph, please beam us back to normal size. I, I, oh. I, I can do that, Doctor. Prepare for size mutation. Oh, no. No! No! It's a crow! No! What was that sound? No! No! It's a, no! It's a crow! It's no! no. Stop, it. Stop it! Will you fix it? Kristoff. Kristoff! Well, y'all best get comfortable. Who knows how long we gonna be here before backup comes. Hold it right there, intruders! <laughs> Greetings, life form. We are military ambassadors of the Constellation League. We received your distress signal, and we have come to offer humanitarian aid. Oh, you must be the Sky People. We've heard stories of other life. Yes, indeed. I am Quiznar Telesto of the Angrox system. To whom do I owe the pleasure? I am Zarsiel, High Priestess of the Center People. Your Majesty, it is an honor. Center people. It's a peculiar name. How did your kind come up with that? 
Strange. Their anatomy is the exact same as a human's, only one hundredth the size. Are you going to answer my question, or do I have to ask a second time? We know not where our name became. Our name was bestowed upon us. Bestowed by who? By the gods! The gods! Listen, we received your distress signal, uh, saying you needed some help. I reckon it's about that little devil outside eating people. Oh, yes. We've had our top scientific minds hard at work designing a messenger machine. It will make communication at long distances easier by far. Hey! I see. That monster outside is responsible for the deaths of thousands of centipede people. The only ones left are here in this hut. My queen, are these not the people that the gods prophesied about? The beings in strange clothing that would come down to save us all? Everyone, these are the heroes sent by the gods to liberate us all. Praise be to them. Praise, That's enough. Leave them alone. Come on. Come on. Come on. If you be the four great heroes in our prophecy, you must come to the temple and stand before the altar. Your Holiness, there must be some misunderstanding. We are just here on orders from the Constellation League. Now, Quiznard, don't underestimate these people. Maybe we were sent here on some higher purpose. Come! The temple is right down the tunnel. <laughs> yes, yes, follow. Come with us, and we will show you too the gods. And now you come right where we want you. We're not here to fight you. 
We're an exploratory crew. What do you want from us? It's not what we want, but who we want. And we think Quiznar knows exactly what we're talking about. Luton, what are they talking about? It's nothing, sir. Nothing? You call Hyde's reason nothing? Quiznar, are you working for them? Captain, it's better off if you don't know the truth. You can't run forever, Quiznar Telesto. Soon, you'll have to answer for your own crimes. Quizno, you better explain yourself right this way. That's a captain's order. All right. Fine. Boy, this entire time? No, Captain. I used to be. I was an infantry soldier 20 years ago for the Flamborian Empire. Once I saw the terror my people brought across the galaxy, I defected. I ran away from my post, and along the way, I killed my commanding officer. If I didn't, I would have died myself. I joined the Constellation League to help people, to bring peace to the galaxy. I'm sorry I lied to you all. It was the only thing I could do to keep you safe. Well, it seems like your disguise was too clever for your foolish shipmates, but now look where it's led them, right into our clutches. Wait, you can't take our communications officer prisoner. Quiznar Telesto is wanted for high crime treason by the Flamborian Empire. And this planet is under our jurisdiction. We must carry out the Emperor's orders. Perhaps we can come to some sort of deal. We take Quiznar, and you can run back to your little ship. But we'll still be stranded here with that monster outside. Our size mutation rave is destroyed. Oh, you mean you don't have one of these? Is that the handheld size mutation console? Indeed. State of the art Flamborian tech. You listen here, you big blueberry. Only four of us are getting out of here alive, and there's a snowball's chance in hell of it being any of y'all. Really? Really? What are you doing? Oh, we'll see about that, space cowboy. Open fire! <laughs> It's a lieutenant or some back or not? It's the flare boy. They found him. Captain, is that you? I'm sorry I broke the size mutation ray, but I want to help. Kate Ash, I don't want you anywhere near the radio ray. If we make it out of your alignment, Captain, now, that's the time. Christoph, we are in grave danger. Send back the media. And don't let the android anywhere near the drop pod. Jacques Lusto, the general. I said, La Fure Hava is going to know. We don't make it out of here alive, I want you to know that. Well, you really should have gotten coffee with me that one time. I mean, you're missing out on the most eligible bachelor in the constellation. You shut your mouth! You are a self-centered, incompetent fool! We are going to make it out of here alive, and I will never go on a date with you. Is that clear? All lovebirds, focus! I can get you out of here. You just have to follow my lead. 
the lasers could vaporize us. Me! Rock profile. Things get tough. You just gotta grab the bowl by the hole. There's only one left. All right, you flamboyant scum. Your time on this planet is up. Surrender now or... Get your hopes up. I've got it. Everybody gather around. Telling us when you're an intergalactic fugitive hiding from political persecution? Oh, lesson learned, Captain. But Captain, what about the Sinta people? We completely destroyed their religious system and left their town in shambles. Surely we have to help them. You know, Doctor, I don't think we should. What do you mean? They can't rebuild on their own. Of course they can. They may be tiny, but they're human. And if there's one thing all of humanity has in common, it's that we are resilient. When tragedy strikes, we stick together, overcome all odds. Sure, we can help them rebuild, give them aid, but then what? We are witnessing the birth of civilization, one that has amazing potential. One that, in time, will begin to carve out their space in this great big galaxy of ours. And no man, woman, or flamboyant has the right to take that away from Seven, section G65 of the Constellation Code says that all Flamborians must be apprehended on site and brought to maximum security prison. I think that checks out. That is factual. Yeah. Wait! Wait, you can't be serious! Oh, Quiz Nye, don't worry. You'll probably get out on a couple of months on good behavior. And hey, my cousin's the head guard there. I'll put in a good word for you. Well, thank you all for watching with us this evening for this gripping tale. Please join us next week as we watch the never-before-seen pilot for the 90s sitcom Two in the Bush 
which never made it to air after the leading actress was placed in the Witness Protection Program. Good night, ladies and gentlemen. Funding for Timeless Television Treasures is provided by Mancino's Pizzas and Grinders, Schlemcorp Enterprises, the Corporation for Public Broadcasting, and contributions to this station from viewers like you. Thank you.